Hey there, fellow marketers, Professor Walters here. And today we're gonna to talk about value-based marketing. And when people talk about value, a lot of times they just think, oh, the lowest price, that's the best value. Well, here's the thing, the lowest price isn't necessarily the best value. What you're looking for is the best deal. What is gonna give me the biggest bang for my buck? What's the one that's gonna make me feel like I'm getting the most for paying the least for that. And it's not just getting things cheaply, it's getting things where you really feel that, hey, I feel like I got something extra from that, right? And so we really have to think about that. And when you're looking at value-based marketing, what you have to realize is people's perception of value will be different. Okay, a lot of times it might depend on, you know, where you live or might be on your background or what you've bought before in your, your purchasing history, you know? Think about it. If you've bought multiple the same thing, you have an idea of what the price should be, right? Like, we travel a lot. So if I know, if I'm going in the summer, if I can get a ticket for $1,000 to Europe, I'm like, hey, you know, that's, that's a decent price. And so if I see one for $800, i am like, wow, that's a good deal. Now, that's not cheap but I feel it's a good deal in comparison. On the other side, if people don't have that background, they haven't bought a lot of tickets, they don't know. Is that a good price? I'm not really sure. And so perception becomes a really big thing. And, and when you look at it over time, the, the, you know what was one time a really good value might not be anymore. Like if I think back to what my buddies paid, the very first DVD player I ever saw was when I was in college. I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. And I'm sure that dude probably spent a thousand dollars on it. And now you're like, a thousand dollars for a DVD player? Who would even get a DVD player? Where would you even buy a DVD player? Like I wouldn't spend more than 10 bucks on one, right? And you realize is wait, it, it's because the perception of what was important and what the value was for then and now is very different. And so we really have to think about that. And that's why it's important to realize when you're looking at value, your new competition can really impact the value that people find in your products. Because you may do a great job and charging a price you think is very good value, but then someone else comes in and charges a completely different price, offering a completely different set of products a different value proposition and that changes how everybody sees everything you know it's kind of like you know a few years ago when the switch came out for nintendo it was you know yeah it was a good value because you know it was it was a lot more affordable than the xbox or the playstation 4 right and it had some pretty cool games you know so you had that but now you look at it, it's like well it's not really as big of a value as it was because back then there was a lot of different games but now you're seeing that the new cool games, like the newest Star Wars games or whatever, they're not coming on the Switch, they're coming on the Xbox, the newest PlayStations and stuff like that. So my vision of value of what I thought, wow, the, the Switch was a good value back in the day, and now I'm like, eh, not really. Maybe I do get my kid the PlayStation 5 so he can play you know, the new Star Wars game and the Miles Morales Spider-Man game and those things. And, and there's different things I start to value, and you have to realize that because bringing out those cool new games makes the newer Xboxes, the newer PlayStations look a lot better than the Switch. So the value really isn't there anymore. Even it is a lot cheaper than those newest versions of the other consoles, all right? And so that's why it's really important you kind of take this all into perspective when you are looking at value. Because again, just because the burger is a dollar doesn't mean I think I have to buy it because the lowest price item. If I see they have the daily double there, you know, the double cheeseburger for $1.50, I'm like, Hey, now that I feel is a deal because a double is usually like three bucks. It's that perspective, okay? It's how people are valuing things, all right? So if you ever get a deal, you know, if you're one of my students from, you know, from the University of Illinois and you get a, you know, a deal for, oh, $10 for a bus to Chicago. Well, dang, that's a really good price. But is it a good value? If they tell you, oh, we leave at midnight here and we drop you off at, you know, O'Hare Terminal 5 at 4 a.m., um, you know, you're like, well, um, Wait a minute, like, why would I want to be there at 4 a.m.? There's no flights and I, I need to go to one of the other suburbs. It's not really paying off. Even though it's the lowest price, it's not a good value. It'd be better for me to buy something else. That's why when you're looking at cheap airlines, whether you're looking at Legion or Spirit or EasyJet or Ryanair or whoever, you don't just say, you don't just look at the price that the ticket is, you look at the overall value you're getting for us. Like, look, if I get in at 10 in the morning, it doesn't matter what airport I get into, I can find public transportation into the city. But if I'm getting at 10 o'clock at night, well, then I have to take a taxi in and if the taxi is $100 and the ticket was only $50, I might as well have bought the $100 ticket from somebody else and got in a normal time and had free public transport. 
So you really have to take all these things into consideration. And when you're starting to develop value-based marketing, some things you really need to do is you have to realize you really need to be sharing information. You need to set up things so everybody in your supply chain can be talking to you so you can see where those changes are happening. You can see where people are valuing things. You know, look, I love going to Culver's. I love that. But the thing is, when you go and you go through the drive through there, you know, it's Culver's, they make the food for you. So you have to sit and wait, right? And you're like, is there something that they could be doing to add value at that point? Because for me, it's like, look, I'm on the highway. I got to get going. I don't have time to wait. I just want to blow through there. And we start to realize, hey, if I share that with them, maybe they have our special highway menu. You know, it's like we have five things that'll be out in your car in two seconds or less. I mean, maybe there's something you come up with, but you need to know this information. You need to be sharing that information about what people are valuing and then creating products that match into that. Okay, so then you see that, oh, they value this. I need to deliver on that, okay? Now, another thing you have to realize when you're looking at value is really kind of balancing the costs and the benefits. And you really need, to, that's why it's important like when you communicate, these all kind of tie together. When you communicate, you learn their needs, wants, and desires, right? But the thing is, is we have to balance it out. People want a cheap flight, but they also want a safe flight, right? They want a cheap flight, but they want a clean flight. They want a cheap flight, but they want to get to the airport they want to go to. You know, that's one of those things. I mean, do you want to land at O'Hare or do you want to land at Midway or do you want to land at Peoria, right? I mean, it's all like Chicago land area. You kind of have to put these things into perspective, all right, to give yourself an idea. So make sure you're balancing those things out and realize what do people care about? And then I think with all this, which is kind of an obvious one, is when you want to really build value and have an understanding of a value-based marketing, you really need to build relationships. So this is, you know, when you develop a customer relationship, yes, it's doing their wants and needs, desires and things like that, but you're keeping track of it. You're understanding why they're doing those things. So you can see it's like, hey, if they're valuing a home and I see, oh, they, they have kids and their kids are eventually going to go to school and go to college. Well, if I'm a financial advisor, my value market is, yeah, we cost more for the trade but we develop you we've developed for you a financial plan for 20 years not two. Oh yeah because we know that Caleb and Liam they're in grade school now but then they're gonna be in high school then college and then then you got grandkids down I mean do you want to have something to leave behind for them oh yeah good point maybe I don't want to blow it all right now and so you see that and building that relationship really helps because then you can understand what they're what's valuable to them but also people value that relationship because I like not having to explain what I want 500 times. I like when I go to my favorite restaurant, they're like, Mark, I'm like, Marlene. They're like, dos sopes. I'm like, that's right. And they're like, cool, here's your tecate and we're good to rock and roll. And so you have these experiences out there and it really helps people value things better. So I just want to put that in your mind when you're looking at value-based marketing. So I hope it can help you out. Anyway, I'll say bye.